This is the fraction of an inch adding machine from the 1950s. It's made of three metal discs stacked on top of each other. The top one is fixed to the bottom one by these two rivets, but the middle one can spin around. It's got a little window here where you can read the answer. On the back you can see it was made by Sheridan Printers in Detroit. Mine has the original vinyl case. You know this thing was made in America because it's for inches. See here in the US we all live our lives acting like it makes perfect sense to measure things in inches and feet. There are 12 inches and a foot, 3 feet and a yard, which is close to a meter, and 5,280 feet in a mile. What could be simpler? If we're just talking about inches and feet, really we're using a base 12 system. Like instead of counting 0 to 9 and then carrying over to the next digit when you hit 10, you go from 0 inches to 11 inches and then you carry over to make 1 foot when you hit 12. This system apparently originated in the Roman Empire. Math was hard for them and it was their own fault because they subdivided their units in all these weird ways. Feet divided into 12 inches. They invented the system which eventually led to the money in the British Empire. 20 shillings in a pound, 12 pence in a shilling, and 4 farthings in a pence. Those Romans didn't seem to know any better. In the heyday of the mechanical computing age, people made special devices to handle these weird kinds of systems. Like here's an adiator type device that you can use to add pounds, shillings, and pence. See, the pounds digits are all normal. The shillings has a normal ones digit, but the tens digit only allows a one or a zero. And the pence digit has one that's base 12 for the pence, and another one that's base 4 for the farthings. Or how about the standard Russian abacus? It has one base 4 row for adding quarter kopecks. Moral is, when your units themselves are subdivided in a weird way, you have to make a weird machine to handle it. All of this brings us to the fraction of an inch adding machine. Actually, almost none of what I just said really applies to this machine. That's what's so weird about it. I had assumed that a machine just used for adding inches would have some weird base 12 structure to it, since a foot is 12 inches. But I should have read the label better. This thing has nothing to do with adding inches together. It only adds fractions of an inch. Like seriously, the maximum value you can display for the answer is less than one inch. See, here's zero. All the way over here is one half. And the biggest number is this fraction, 63 over 64. So what does this even have to do with inches at all? The answer is nothing. The only relation is that inches are always subdivided into fractions where the denominator is a power of two. These are called dyadic fractions and lengths of less than an inch are always measured using dyadic fractions. Nobody ever talks about two-fifths of an inch. It's always like seven-eighths of an inch. You can't even find a ruler or a tape measure in which the inches are subdivided into tenths. Why do we do it that way? Romans, I guess. Use it with a stylus, but it never came with its own. The instructions just say to use a pencil. When you want to add two fractions, you find the right hole and pull the thing around until it stops when you hit this little bar. The little window shows the answer, which is just the number I dialed in. If you want to add something to it, you just dial that in too. Like this here would look like this. Around the edges, you can also find decimal equivalents to all the fractions. That seems like it could be useful, although probably not while you're adding. You reset the thing to zero by finding and pulling the black hole back to the start. This spinning design is similar to some other machines I talked about. The basic idea is the same. You spin it a little bit for each number you added, and then there's something that keeps track of the answer. These other ones have an answer display that can keep track of the higher digits. This lets the machine count up the number of times you've gone all the way around. That extra feature is missing on the fraction of an inch adding machine. Here the answer only reads the fraction part. So if you add, say, 3 fourths plus 3 fourths, the real answer is 1 and a half, but you only see the half. The fact that we're not keeping track of full revolutions means the machine is mechanically very simple. There's no gears at all. You just turn the one wheel, and all the answers are just written on the inside of that same wheel that you're turning. Actually, this thing is pretty easy to make by yourself. 
Somebody at the Evil Mad Scientist blog has a template that you can print out and put together yourself. I'll put a link in the description you can click on. The design of this thing is really excellent, and it has lots of little touches that I love. I like how the fraction labels are all different sizes. The ones with small denominators, like the halves, the fourths, the eighths, they're all labeled big, since these are the most commonly used. Then the sixteenths are smaller, the thirty-twos are a little bit smaller, and the sixty-fourths are the smallest. There are three discs of metal, and the middle one moves. It looks like there might be a lot of friction with that middle one sandwiched in between the other two, but somehow this thing spins really easily. On the back, you can see the back plate isn't actually flat. I guess they did this to minimize the actual contact area between the plates. Check it out, I'm going to squeeze it really hard, but it doesn't matter, it still spins just fine. And check out this ridge here. The ridge is right below where you stick the pencil in. That makes like a little valley so that your pencil can fully penetrate the holes. It's a pretty smooth ride and it feels great. The only thing I'm not sure about is this little bump and dip up here by the one fourth. Really, I don't know what this is for at all. It seems like maybe it's to help you use it without the pencil, like you should be able to grab that little thing with your finger and spin it around, but that doesn't really work. As soon as you clear the outer dip, it's hard to get it to slide since you can't really grip it anymore. It just doesn't work well at all. So maybe I'm missing the point. What do they intend for me to do with that little bump? I tried a few different things. No. 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 What? No. Oh. oh. Well, maybe that's what it's for.